Victory Ministries, and I'm Pastor Kiyomo Butler, and once again, it's a pleasure to have you all joining in with us. Before we go any farther, before we get started, I'd like for us to bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, giving you the glory and the honor and the praise. We thank you for your grace, we thank you for your love, and we thank you for your mercy. We ask that your word will go forth, Father, spreading the truth of the gospel, all of you and none of me. We praise you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So greetings, everyone. I'm thankful for everyone who's been joining with me over this past three months that I've been on the air. You know, it's been a blessing, and I'm looking forward to many, many, many more months and years of, of service in the Lord. And for those of you all who is your first time joining in with us, you know, we're Restoration Victory Ministries, and we're a ministry that's really designed, the calling and the anointing that God has given me is to help us to understand who we are, restored and in victorious in Christ Jesus. I think that you know, one of the things that I used to always hear is that one of the biggest tricks of Satan was to convince the world that he did not exist. But as a man of God and as a child of God and as children of God, what I've realized is for us, the biggest trick or the biggest weapon of Satan is to not allow us to understand and believe and know what God has done for us through the blood. You see, Satan doesn't want children of God to know who they really are. The Bible calls us in the book of Romans, Eight chapter says that we are heirs of God and we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And as an heir of God and as a joint heir with Jesus Christ, as someone who has the spirit of God dwelling within them, which means that we have God, the power, the anointing, the love and the glory of God on the inside of us. Man, there are things that belong to us and there's things that we can achieve and there's things that we can do simply by us believing and trusting in this word of God. You know, first Corinthians six uh, verses 19 and 20 says that what know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost for the spirit of God is in you which you have from God and you are not your own. It says that you were blood bought with a price so you should glorify God in your whole body and in your whole spirit which belongs to him. Once again that's 1 Corinthians 6 19 and 20 and, and I'm giving you this scripture so we can see and understand that the Bible says that we were bought with a price. We don't even belong to ourselves anymore. The Spirit of God is on the inside of us, so we should glorify God with our whole body and with our whole spirit, which belongs to God. You know, an understanding and, and meditation on that scripture will give you great revelation if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into the truth of the gospel. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Um, you know, I, I don't really teach series but I'm going to start a series today, and this series is going to last really as long as the Holy Spirit takes us, as long as the Holy Spirit decides that he has something that he wants to speak to me, through me. And this series is going to be something that's going to be mandatory for us as Christians to understand, to live a life restored and to live a life victorious. And, and for the sake of giving this series a title, it's going to be Have Faith in God, Have Faith in Jesus Christ, and Believe in Yourself. Have faith in God, have faith in Jesus, and believe in yourself. Now, beloved, we're going to take a journey through the scriptures, and I'm going to show you, we're going to start today with just understanding God and understanding what it means to have faith in God, and then we're going to look at what it means to have faith in Jesus, and then we're going to look at what, through the blood of Jesus, us as children of God, we need to believe about ourselves, because, you know, and I want to say this before we get started, you can be born again. <clears throat> you can believe in Jesus Christ, you can believe in God, you can go to heaven and still not receive all the blessings and all the promises that the word of God says are yours. You know, everything that we get from God, we have to believe, we have to accept, and then we have to put our faith in action. You know, there's things that we, God has done everything that he's going to do, Christ Jesus has done everything that he's going to do through his shared blood and his resurrection and his ascension into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of God right now in heaven, and he's given us power and authority and anointing on this earth in his name. But it takes us 
to accept it, and it takes us to believe it, and it takes us to move forward in this power. You know, I, there's two songs that we use in, in the ministry um, for the sake of my own midweek services that we have, and one of the songs that we use is by Kirk Moss. It's called Restored. It's called um, I've Been Redeemed. I've been um, restored into the blood of Jesus. I've been redeemed from guilt and shame. He, he says, um, never reject it. Um, just reconnect it. I'm exalted because I know the name of Jesus. And, he, you know, one of the things he says in that song is he said, but you have to believe. He said, you know, I don't care what nobody else says. I believe that I'm restored and that I'm redeemed through the blood of Jesus. And then there's another song by Diedrich Hatton that calls, um, I want it all back. And, you know, I, for the sake of starting off today, understanding God the Father, I want us to understand I want it all back. Listen, this song says that I want it all back. And he's talking to Satan. He's telling Satan, listen, I want everything back that you stole from me. I want my peace. I want my love. I want my joy. I want my family back. I want my friends back. I want my prosperity back. I want all the blessings that you have taken from me. I want them back. He's not saying, Mr. Satan, please give them back. He's saying, I want them back. I'm going to take them back because they belong to me. They no longer belong to you. You no, have, you no longer have any authority over my life. I want them all back. You know, this is not even the scripture that we're going to look at today, but that song brings into mind Colossians 1 and 13 that says that we give thanks unto God the Father who has made us able to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints of light. He has delivered us from the power of Satan and from the power of darkness. He has translated us into the kingdom of Christ Jesus. We have been redeemed through the blood of Jesus and we have forgiveness of our sins. So we've been delivered from the power of darkness or from the power of Satan. We've been translated into Christ's kingdom. So we're covered under the blood of Jesus. We've been redeemed by his blood. So Satan doesn't have any power, any control, any authority over us at all. What we have to understand as Christians is going into this, this teaching is, listen, we have to accept this word. We, you know, our foundation scriptures is Romans 1 and 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation to them that believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein in the gospel of Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God revealed from heaven from faith to faith for the just shall live by their faith. Romans 10 and 17 says that faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen to the glory of God the Father through us. And that one scripture really kind of tells you everything. All the promises of God have faith in God. Through Christ Jesus, have faith in Christ Jesus, is yes and amen to the glory of God the Father through us. Believe in yourself. So we're going to start from there. Have faith in God. Have faith in Christ Jesus. But you have to believe in yourself. You, we have to, saints, we have to believe in ourselves and who we are as children of God. And we have to understand that from Genesis to Revelation, and everything in it has been a spiritual battle. It's been a warfare. It's been Satan. It's not really a warfare God against Satan because God has no, he's not concerned about Satan. It's Satan trying to take from God. It's Satan trying to destroy this earth and it's Satan trying to destroy the children of God on this earth. And it has always been the battle. But us as children of God redeemed by the blood of Jesus, Satan has no, he cannot win. But we have to understand that the promises that God has given us in his word through and by Christ Jesus, they are yes and they are amen to the glory of God through us, which means that we have to take the initiative to believe and accept this word to see these promises come to pass. Because like I said before, we can believe for salvation, we can believe in Jesus, and we can accept Jesus as our Savior, and we will go to heaven. We can live a life led by the fruits of the Spirit, which is from Galatians 5. And we can walk in love and joy and peace and long-suffering and goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we will go to heaven because the word says that whosoever shall believe and call on the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shall be saved. So you will go to heaven. But what I'm talking about and what I'm trying to get us to understand is this life of restoration, this life of victory, this life of redemption, this life of perfect peace which is life and life more abundantly. If you remember John 10 and 10, the enemy, the thief comes with the steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said that he came to have life and give us life and life more abundantly. The thief comes with the steal, kill, and destroy from you. Take it all from you. 
kill and destroy everything about you in your life. But Jesus Christ came that we should have life and life more abundantly. Jesus Christ came to help us understand that we can take it all back in his name. Now, I want us, we're going to go to Hebrews 11, and we're going to look at a, a couple scriptures from Hebrews 11, and I kind of want to look at it a different way than maybe we have normally, traditionally looked at it. Um, you know, and I want to have a little fun with this today because, listen, I want us, you know, I'm going to say this before I get started in, in having faith today, just understanding God and who God is, and we have to have faith in God the Father based upon who God the Father is. And so I want us to have a, I want us to logically look at this, but understand it won't logically make sense. Praise God. So I want us to look at this logically. And when I say look at this logically, understand that when I speak to you, I'm coming straight from the word of God. I'm not making anything up. I'm not giving you any translations or any interpretations. It's coming straight from the word of God. So logically, we have to believe that it's the truth because remember, our faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. We know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And we know that the word of God never changes because God never changes. So we're going to look at what the word of God says with a logical understanding, almost like looking at a word and learning how to spell it. It's going to be in plain English. Logically, we're going to look at it. And then at that point, we have to take our logical minds off to understand that we're not going to make it make logical sense to us. And, and I know that's kind of an oxymoron, but, you know, just bear with me for a little while. We're going to have a little fun with this, and I want to look at this now. What does the Bible say about God? If we look starting in Genesis, when the Bible talks about God creating the heavens and the earth, God is so powerful that God just spoke and the heavens and the earth was created. The Bible says that he didn't do any work. He didn't go out and do any labor. He just spoke it. God is so powerful that he speaks things into existence. Romans 4 and 17, starting at verse 17, when it's talking about Abraham who believed God, they said, God calleth things that be not as though they are. Even in Hebrews right here, it says that, starting at verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things un unseen. It says, For by faith the elders obtain a good testimony. It says, And then by faith we understand that the worlds were created by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were created by things which are not visible, which means that, God just spoke it. God has so much power, he just spoke it into existence. Now let's look, let's get an understanding of what the Bible says about God. We call him the Lord of hosts, which means he's the Lord of the heavenly host of angels. I mean, he's the Lord of the, his, his warriors, his angels. He's the Lord of them. The Bible calls God the father of lights or the father of spirits, which means he's the father of all spirits, all spiritual beings. He's the father. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, it says that he's the most high God and he rules in the kingdom of heaven and on this earth and he sets over it whom he will. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Bible says that heaven is God's throne and earth is his footstool. So we understand that God has all power and all control. He's the alpha and the omega, meaning he's the beginning and the ending. The Bible says that God owns all the silver and all the gold on this earth. It says all the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. He is in control. He has all power and he has all authority. Beloved, listen, in this day of time, there's this new thing called the gods. And we all serve our own little God. And we all, listen, all that, I'm going to call that, I'm going to make up a word right now, all that debaucherish, and, and that's not even a word, but I'm saying it in a way. Well, you understand that's complete foolishness. All that idiotic thinking and, and what it is, is, is heresy. It's, it's idolatry because it's putting something else in the position of God. There's one God. If you read in the Old, in the Old Testament, you'll know that all these little fake gods that everybody have and all these Egyptian gods and all these other Greek gods, and those are gods that Satan brought into play that people start serving because they didn't want to serve the true and living God. But there's only one true and living, most powerful, most high God. Listen, I'm going to show you in two places how we know God has authority, just so we can understand, because it's, it's, we have to understand this in order to, to really get a hold of this. In Luke 10, Jesus told the, um, the 70 half he had sent them out when they came back to him, and they were like, Lord, the demons are subject to us in your name, which means, Lord, the demons bow down to us in your name. 
And Jesus said, listen, I saw Satan fall from the sky like lightning. Well, we know that Satan is the, is the force of evil. And Jesus was saying, here, listen, I saw Satan fall from the sky. I saw him be defeated. So we know that God is more powerful than Satan. We also, you know, this, the story in the book of Job, we all know the book of Job. We all know the story in the book of Job. But one of the most important things that I want us to see in the book of Job is Job had to ask God. I mean, Satan had to, I'm sorry, Satan, excuse me, you all. Satan had to ask God to mess with Job. Satan couldn't just go and take and destroy. And he had to ask God. Now, remember, in the garden, he didn't have to ask God to try and manipulate and fool Adam. He didn't have to ask God to try and get into Adam and Eve's mind and make them think wrong and make them do something against what God's word had told them. And them, they didn't have this word. They had a, a word. They walked with God. They had a spiritual word from God. So, no, Satan doesn't have to ask God to come and to try to make you go against God by putting false thoughts, false words, false understandings, false belief, emotions in your mind. But Satan cannot touch you. In the Old Testament, listen, he had to ask God. He said, well, look, can I? God said, well, you know, you can go and do what you want to Job. And Satan said, well, you know, I can't do nothing to him because you have him protected. Satan couldn't even get to Job. Now, the greatest thing about that is Job is a man that was under the old covenant. Jesus hadn't even came to the earth and bled and died. I, I would just like to think that when the Son of God came to this earth, and bled and died. The Bible says in Romans 8, it says that God who did not spare but offered up his own son for us all, will he not with him freely give us all things? Listen, when God sent Jesus to this earth, that was the ultimate. That was God gave through his grace everything that he could give us in his son and it letting his son die and turning his back on his son so his son could suffer for our sins. So I just in my own logical understanding, I would like to say, okay, if I'm covered under that kind of blood and that kind of covenant, then the protection that is on me is much greater than the protection that was on Job. Now, that's just, that's not anything I'm saying biblical, so don't go say I'm making up any new doctrine. I'm just saying in my spirit, man, that is what I believe and I understand based upon the understanding of the old and the new covenant. But what we have to see and have to understand is Satan didn't have no power. Satan has no power over you. Satan, understand that, because God is the most high God. And I'm, I'm, I'm beating this in the ground because we're on the half faith in God part, because we have to get out of, we have to get now into a relationship where we understand that God is real. Just as God protected Job and loved Job, God protects and loves us. And under the blood of Jesus, Satan cannot mess with us. He has no power and no authority over us. We serve God the Father, the most high God, the ruler of heaven and earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. When you say something like that, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, then that means that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Now, with that understanding, let's look at biblically, biblically, faith according to the word of God. And I say this because I think that it's going to be mandatory for us as Christians in order to get here restored in victory through Christ Jesus to have our foundation of faith right. Listen, Hebrews 11, 1 through 6, I want to explain it to you. They weren't, the faith examples that they gave here, the amazing ones that we're going to look at, weren't um, post-Jesus Christ examples of faith. They were pre-Jesus Christ examples of faith. And they were faith in God the Father. They were faith in the Most High God. They were faith that God was God and that what God said was, even if it didn't make, listen, I want to show you some things now, and I want you to understand this, because what these men did made no sense. It, it wasn't logical. It didn't make sense. And to be quite honest with you, just in our human emotional mind, our rationalizing mind, we would call each one of these men crazy. It's amazing how we read this, and we read it with uh, an educated, rational mind, where we want to make sense of it, but we really don't get the depth of what these men did because of their belief and their faith in God which has to be our foundation. We have to believe Hebrews 11, 1 and 6. I mean, Hebrews 11 and 6 says that without faith it's impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that God is God, according to <laughs> what, it's, what it's saying right here. So let's just look at this. We're going to go to uh, Hebrews 11, verse 5. It says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and they said, and he was not found, 
for God had translated him. Before his translation, he received this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch was translated. In the history of this Bible, three men have been translated that we know of. Enoch being the first. Uh, Isaiah, I'm not sorry, not, not Isaiah, um, Elijah being the second, and Jesus Christ being the third. Now understand translation. Translation means that you're here one minute and you're gone the next. Now from the way this, this, this scripture passage right here reads, it means that Enoch knew he was going to be translated. God had told him he was going to be translated, and he was telling other people he was going to be translated. He believed God. So we got a man walking around on the earth telling all his friends and family, hey, one day God just going to take me on up out of here. I mean, I want y'all to think about that because it's very serious. We laugh about it, and we have to understand the kind of faith in God that we must have. Enoch was so convinced that God was God and that God rewarded him because he would diligently seek him, and that he had a relationship with God. The Bible says that he not walk with God, that he believed that God was just going to one day take him away. And God one day took him away, and he could not be found. People were looking for him. They put out uh, um, abandonment reports and kidnap reports, and they were all in the trees and the mountains looking for him, but he could not be found. Real briefly, it's just like when Elijah was taken away, and Elijah got taken away, and all the other prophets came to Elisha, and they said, hey, you want us to go looking for him in the mountains? Because they didn't believe that he had really disappeared, and Elisha said, nah, you don't need to go look for him, he's gone. It was the same thing with Enoch. He, listen, do we really realize what kind of faith that is? Let, let's just keep it real. What kind of faith it is for God to tell you, and you're going to disappear, and you believe the word of God, and because your faith is so strong, you literally ascend up into heaven. Beloved, that is a serious kind of faith that I can honestly say I don't have right now. And I don't know many of us that really have that kind of faith. However, if it is written in the word of God, in what we call the faith hall of fame, as an example of us, to what kind of faith we should aspire to have, then it means that God desires us to have that kind of faith and belief. What kind of faith is that? That's faith that goes against your emotions, your logic, your understanding, what everybody else is saying, what tradition is saying, what the world believes. It's faith that believes the word of God and believes what God has said unto you, and you will stand on that with your life. Now let's look down, uh, uh, let's look down at verse 7. I love this, and then we're going to close after this. We're going to end this teaching with this today. Let's talk about Noah. We all know the story of Noah. Now, beloved, Noah, it had not ever rained, which means that Noah had not ever seen a boat. Noah was instructed by God in a dream, and because of his fear and belief in God, he went and started building a boat that some say was the size of two football fields because God told him it was going to rain. Do you know how much ridicule Noah came under? Do you know Noah was crazy? Okay, let's put it... Let, let's change it. Let's say God came to me and told me, or came to one of you all and told you all, it's time to go to Lowe's and it's time to go to Ace Hardware and it's time to go to Home Depot and all these other places. And he gives you direct instructions on how to build a spaceship in your backyard because he's going to send fire from heaven and your spaceship is going to be the only spaceship that can survive this. And he starts giving you instructions on what to do. Yeah. First of all, you would think you're crazy yourself. That ain't God. I can, hear, I can hear myself now. Man, that ain't God. I will call every pastor I know to pray with me, pray on me, anoint me with all. We need to fast and pray. Hey, we need to do all kind of stuff because, man, that can't be God. And then if I actually went forward and start doing it, oh, man, Fox 5 and Channel 8 News and Channel 11 News and all these other news agencies, CNN, bro, they would have a field day with me and with you and with anyone else because we believe God. Listen, beloved, we, we have to understand that what God requires from us is faith, is we have to, in a nutshell, we have to establish such a relationship with God the Father through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because we have to have faith in him as the Son of God, as God in the flesh, as the Spirit of God upon this earth. Right now, I see that the right hand of God in heaven, but yet God also, God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit. I'm not trying to separate the two, I'm trying to help us to understand that we have to have the faith that says that for us as Christians, if God's word said it, it is. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care if nobody likes it. 
I don't care if anyone understands it. I don't care if anyone accepts it. I don't care if I lose friends. I don't care if my family turn their back on me. I don't care if people talk about me and ridicule me. I don't care if I'm not a part of your crew anymore. I don't care if I lose all my members in my church, all my members in my social organizations. If God's word said it, it is, it is, it is. Period. Because we have to understand that if God said it in his word, God can bring it to pass because God calls those things that be not as though they are. God is the most high God. God, the Bible says that God is the most high God. The Bible says first, and as I say this as I close, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Earth is God's footstool. The most high God rules, has all power and authority in the kingdom of heaven and of earth. And he puts an authority and power. He does what he wants on this earth. Beloved, let's trust God. Let's honor God. Let's live our life to glorify the word of God. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's have faith in God. Let's have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And let's believe in ourselves. We love you. We see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.